We are all feeling the pinch of inflation right now. Prices rising from gasoline, paint at the pump, to clothing, groceries, just about everything we, we buy has gone up a little bit because of this inflation. And now we're seeing the government try to combat that by raising interest rates. What does it all mean? Well, joining me to talk about that is Paula Gardner, the business editor at Bridge Michigan. Daniel Manenkov is an economic forecaster at the University of Michigan. And David Bruhan is vice president and portfolio manager at Schwartz & Company Investment Advisors. Good morning, thanks for joining us. Uh, and I feel like inflation is something really people haven't had to deal with for a while, maybe even a couple of decades. So. I kind of want to start with a, a, a how did we get here, and I think you're all qualified to answer this, and feel free to jump in, but let me start with you, Daniil, and uh, is it too simplistic here to look at this as a result of this inflation, as a result of the government kind of flooding the market with all that money that came for people during COVID? Is that, a, is that part of it? I mean, it's definitely part of it, but to briefly summarize this, it's all uh, due to the pandemic. And that includes the, I mean, the, the, the public health crisis itself, but also many of the policies that we implemented and a lot of the consequence of the pandemic. So, I mean, uh, it's obvious that, that that money that the federal government gave to people helped some uh, to fuel inflation, but also a lot of people who did not get any uh, help, so think people on the higher end of income distribution, basically couldn't spend a lot of their income for two years, and they saved a lot. And that sort of overhang of saving also makes people sort of tolerate inflation a little bit more than they normally would have. So, I mean, inflation is a complex phenomenon. There is a cost push, so things are getting expensive uh, because supply chains are broken. There is an income effect because people have plenty of money, but there is also a social aspect. Uh, people were more accepting of price increases because at least for a while they understood that the situation is unprecedented. And they sort of were, were open to uh, businesses that, that, that had to deal with COVID and survive COVID. They were open to seeing a little bit of price increases. But once prices get going, they can be hard to extinguish. I mean, inflation yeah. typically has its own momentum. Yeah, it is complex for sure. Paula, let me ask you, we, I mean, we saw the Fed raise the interest rate this week, and I, I believe five to six more hikes are expected. Uh, what's your read on where it's headed? And are state lawmakers uh, powerless in all of this, or do they have any recourse, do you think? We will see more interest rate um, increases for the rest of the year. That's every projection that I've seen. Um, and some people are saying that it might not even end this year, that it could keep going. Um, I'm not sure exactly how high it will go. And Daniel may be the better person to ask on, on, on the forecast. Um, it does seem that the state is, you know, when it comes to elected officials, you know, what kind of power do they have over inflation? They can watch, um, I think politically, everybody wants to help the average consumer spend less. Um, but on a practical level, this is a global problem. We've got global inflation. There's a lot of volatility. Um, gas prices is one example. You know, this is a, this is an international commodity, and no matter what we want uh, the state or federal officials to do about it, it's going to it's going to do its own thing. Yeah, I'll come back to you when I get to. Do you think uh, suspending the gas tax could happen or uh, could could help all that much? But uh, David, I want to bring you in real quick. Uh, is is it possible to raise the interest rate without crashing the stock market? I know we've seen this in 2018. This we tried to raise the rate. Stocks took a dive, and then President Trump said, "No, no, bring it back down to avoid that." W what do you see happening here? That's correct. Um, what matters more than the change is the rate of change. And if the Federal Reserve, uh, although it's a centralized body and they're looking backward trying to guess, um, raises rates and telegraphs uh, what they're going to do, um, and, and they do it in a logical, uh, calm manner, it, it won't affect the stock market that bad. What you don't want to have happen is um, what occurred in the 1970s toward the end uh, when the Carter administration did wage and price controls and, and try to clamp down on it. As the, the capitalist system is wonderfully dynamic. And as long as you allow consumers and businesses to adjust to price increases, become more efficient, find better ways to do things, 
substitute goods and services, uh, globalization has had a wonderful downward pressure on prices. Because uh, as we used to say, in, in a global economy, you are only as profitable as your least sane competitor. So you can only raise prices until somebody overseas or in the United States figures out a better way to do things and lower prices. Unfortunately, you have a perfect storm, uh, as Danielle mentioned, with respect to federal policy in uh, March of 2020, the Federal Reserve pledged $5 trillion uh, to put into the system to save the economy. 2021, the Biden administration passed two big spending bills, 1.9 trillion each. Congress just passed another spending bill. So you're, you're pushing eight, nine trillion dollars in an economy that's about 22 trillion total. So Milton Friedman said it best, inflation is above all a monetary phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And when you push a lot of money into the system, commodities go up. So you've got federal policy, you've got supply chain shortages, uh, and also you have almost a super cycle in commodities. Uh, if you remember back in 2020, gas was about $12 a barrel, or oil rather, and it, it's gone up to 125 and it's come back since. So there's a lot of dynamics, but um, we'll be fine as long as they telegraph this. It's already priced into much of the bond market, mm -hmm. uh, and we stay competitive. Uh, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, the 70s, and I, I think uh, it's been a long time since things got really bad. And you, you think about Gen Xers and uh, uh, millennials, they don't remember that, but they do, you know, are able to look at their maybe their 401k or their uh, investments and see that they've taken a dip recently. Real, uh, David, just real quick, quick answer. Is it the advice there, as it always is, to not panic, stand pat when it comes to that sort of thing? Well, for my investors, most of them are in retirement plans or long-term, five years or more. This is part of what stocks and bonds do. They go yeah. up and down. If you're saving for a car or a house and you've got money invested in two or three years that you're going to need, you may want to reevaluate that because right now we've got headline risk with Russia. You really don't know what Vladimir Putin is going to do. Right. And until this subsides... Um, there, again, there's a bit of headline risk that is going to impact your portfolio. Yeah. Daniil, how long do you think this will last before we're able to uh, deflate the economy a little bit, if you will? Right. The hardest question. <laughs> uh, I think the range of projections is very wide. I think our center point expectation is that maybe it gets a little worse, maybe until early summer before inflation starts to subside. But as I said, there are lots of risks right now. So COVID is not down globally. So there are waves in uh, Asia and China and maybe one starting in Europe, it may come here. It may introduce more disruptions into supply chains. Uh, geopolitics can play a huge role. So the big unknown is what's gonna happen uh, whether China basically joins the rest of the world in terms of enforcing sanctions on Russia or not. And if they don't, what kind of response will we see from the White House? So there may be more geopolitical risks to uh, global supply chains down the road later in the year. But our center point projection is basically uh, relies on what has happened already. So a spike in oil prices, but also uh, the way the government measures uh, rent uh, rents. So a lot of that is already baked in. So we're hoping that that inflation, year over year inflation, will peak uh, by sometime this summer and then start subsiding by the end of the year. That yeah, would be good. But like you said, a lot of X factors. Paul, we've heard the governor talk about possibly vetoing the uh, suspending the state gas tax, a bill that was passed by uh, the Republic, Republican led legislature. What's your read on that? Do you feel like that's going to happen, or is she going to keep pushing for a federal gas tax suspension? Depending on who you talk to, there's going to be a benefit or there won't be. <laughs> you know, this is just like one area where somebody has kind of, you know, we've kind of latched onto this potential solution, um, but other people are suggesting other things. I think ultimately what we have to recognize is um, it's a any kind of a gas tax holiday or, or whatever, you know, however this ends up, it's not a lot of money. And we've got 
on the other hand, we have a lot of people who cannot afford the gas. And something that gets a little bit more particular to who is affected and actually yields some sort of significant relief to them, I think will will be the end solution or at least the most desirable solution. But in the meantime, there are so many businesses who are looking at these prices and not being able to make a decision about how to operate over the coming months because they do not know what their costs are going to be for transportation, for products, for um, for so many things, even, even employees' um, wages. So, I think I think it's natural in Michigan to talk about what has been proposed and to look at what each party is doing. However, in a bigger picture, what we're talking about is fairly minimal, in in my opinion, and from some of the people I talk to. Yeah, uh, and it's certainly going. Well, we'll see what the governor does in in that regard. But uh, obviously, so many factors at play here, uh, and it's uh, certainly a complex issue. And that's why we brought in the best. So I, I want to thank all of you for joining us this morning on Flashpoint to try and help uh, people learn about it a little bit more and then break it down and where we go from here. Uh, it's been really illuminating. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jason. Have a Thank good you. week. You bet. Thank you.